Hello, YouTube Nation. This is Tony Chiray. Uh, you have probably seen my channel before, and you know that I have a lot of video on here from vacations, mostly concert clips. But I've also done some still photography, and I've been doing still photography with digital cameras and SLR, digital SLR cameras for about 15 to 20 years now, and a little bit longer than that with actually regular film cameras. So I have actually want to actually just talk about one particular aspect of photography right now and actually kind of give you guys some tips what I find that works for taking pictures in art museums because uh, I've actually had some really good success. I worked on it getting things done right. So I'm just going to give you some uh, tips and stuff like that on how to take pictures at art museums and I'm actually going to have to actually get some uh, stuff up here. So just give me a second here. Uh, the first thing you need to do when you go to an art museum is actually make sure that you actually have the proper uh, okay that it's actually good. It's all right to take pictures. Now I've been to quite a few art museums that will allow you to take photography. Uh, the Nelson Atkins Museum over here in Kansas City will allow you to take photography. The Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City will allow you to take photography. The Louvre in Paris will allow you to take photography. The British Museum in London will allow you to take photography. The Art Institute in Chicago will allow you to take photography. So when you get ready to go into these museums, just ask uh, if it's all right to actually take you know pictures or you can actually even go through the Google and actually say, is it okay to actually take photography in this museum? And they will say yes or no. Uh, another thing I would do is I would actually start out with a smaller art museum when it's not quite so busy. Like we have a museum here in Lawrence, Kansas, which is called the uh, Spencer Museum for Art. I go into there whenever I actually get a brand new camera or a brand new cell phone and shoot some pictures there and actually kind of get used to how it works and everything. Uh, one of the things that you want to do is actually take a little time to do this right. Now, I actually have this picture right here I've taken of this uh, picture in my house. This is what some people typically do. They come up to a picture, they just get it in their viewfinder real quick, just get a snap quick picture, and they're done. Well, as you can see, this picture here has a lot of freaking information that you don't want. It's got the wall, it's got a little bit of angular stuff. It doesn't look well enough to actually do anything with. Now, if you take a little time and actually center things a little bit better and actually get the whole entire art piece into the music like this, what'll happen is you'll see that you get rid of all the information you don't want and you're just left with the picture that you do want. And if you just hover just a little bit longer on these pictures before you actually snap on them, it's going to actually impregnate more information into your picture so you have a lot more pixels that are actually well defined. And you can actually take like a picture like this, as you can see right here, and actually take and print it off with a really good printer and actually get really good museum quality prints because these cameras right now actually take really good resolution and, and, and definition. Uh, you go into another particular aspect of, of photography and museum uh, besides just the uh, paintings. Now here's a picture I have taken with uh, a teapot right here, okay? It's on my table. I just put it there just to kind of get an idea, you know. See, you have all the information. You got all the stuff in the back of it. So, you don't want all that information because that's stuff you don't want to actually show people. So if you take it in, take it in just a little bit further, you'll find that you're going to actually have a little bit more. What was that? Right here, you take it in a little bit further. I'm sorry. You get more information for that just that teapot that you want. All right. Now here's another picture that I did of an angel. Uh, as you can see, hold on a second here. See, wait, okay. This this angel right here. You see all that stuff on the back. You got all this information. You, you don't want to have that. You know, have something that you want to show off to somebody. What I did is I actually 
went in on it as close as I could go. And this is the final product that I actually got. Hold on a second. As you can see, the, the wings of the angels are actually a lot more defined. Uh, there's a lot more definition of the whole entire subject that you want. Something like that you could actually take and go home and print it off. Uh, there are some problems, and I'll tell you how to overcome some of these problems with like uh, with uh, like sculptures and little bitty miniatures. Sometimes they'll actually have things behind glass. And the best thing that I could actually tell you to do is take your camera and place the view, I mean, the, 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 the lens is actually, the lens display right here. Place it as close as you can to the glass to get the glare off. Uh, and then you can actually zoom in on it more and more close. And that'll actually get some of the glare off. Uh, I've actually had this uh, display case at the Spencer Museum. It had a whole bunch of brocades and jewelry and stuff like that. So what I did is I took the camera... And I put it smack right down on the freaking glass without any kind of, without this. And what happens is, put it right down there. The glass is clean. There's no glare. And all of a sudden, you can just sit there and just kind of fine-tune your uh, zoom and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, take a perfect picture. And you can take it home and you're like, oh, wow, this is beautiful. Uh, another thing that you would want to do is when you get into this a bigger museum that actually has some popular art pieces I would actually go into the museum and actually start taking some pictures of the most uh, little bit unnotable pieces that they have kind of work your way up to the bigger ones because what's going to happen is you're going to get a lot of people like at the um, Metropolitan Museum of Art they have galleries all over the whole you know museum uh, especially in the French impression, impression West and stuff like that, what's going to happen is you're going to get a lot of people there. So if you go to the lesser galleries and start taking pictures there, it's going to actually kind of get you a little bit more speed so you know exactly how you want to compose everything. So whenever you get to these bigger ones later on in the day, you'll have an idea actually how to do it fast so you're not sitting there uh, taking up everybody else's time. And it will work out so much better because you'll know exactly the pratfalls and stuff like that that you actually have to avoid. So anyway, I would just want to kind of share some information on how you can get better museum pictures. Uh, and I'm not a, a, a professional at it. I mean, I do have some pictures up on my Flickr account. And I'm actually going to put the uh, link on my uh, description for you there so you can actually check out see what I'm actually talking about so anyway just something I wanted to actually share with everybody and I just hope you enjoy the video and I thank you and goodbye